We've picked up a lot more info in the last few weeks about Far Cry 6 and it does look like it's shaping up to be a bit of a banger of a game. So we've got lots of cool stuff to talk about here and I'm going to break it all down for you in a 10 things you need to know format so you're ready for the revolution on launch day. So let's get going. First up, let's talk about release date. When is this going to be available? Well, Far Cry 6 was delayed this year, but we now have the ironclad launch date of October the 7th. It is definitely coming then, no bamboozles, and it's going to be available across all platforms and you'll either have the choice of a standard gold ultimate or collector's edition. But game editions aside, Ubisoft also said in the last couple of weeks that they will be offering a new generation upgrade for Far Cry 6 for free. So if you do buy the game on PS4 or your standard Xbox, and then you subsequently upgrade to a new generation console, you'll then get the new generation game for free, which is pretty cool to be honest. Now number nine, and when it comes to storyline, we're gonna be going head to head with a big dog antagonist in the game called Anton Castillo. He's the dictator of the South American country of Yara, who's intent on restoring his nation back to its former glory by using this tobacco plant in game called Vivero, which is actually a radical cancer treatment grown exclusively on the island of Yara and nowhere else in the world. Now, Anton is actually played by Juan Carlo Esposito, who you may recognize from the Breaking Bad series, as well as Better Call Saul, and most recently, The Mandalorian. So I personally am a big fan of his work. I absolutely love his performances, and I have no doubt that it's going to be a stellar one here. But with any dictator, there is opposition, and that's where we come in. We are the revolution. So we actually begin the game as a military drop out called Danny and we can either choose male or female depending upon who we prefer and Danny is actually in the process of fleeing Yara to avoid Anton and his oppressive regime. As the story progresses Danny's mindset shifts and quickly becomes intent on liberating the Yara nation by fighting Castillo's regime across jungles, beaches and in urban cities with other Greers and revolutionaries. Also throughout the game we'll be able to see story cutscenes in third person as well as actually within certain areas or combat animations which I think is a big switch up from previous Far Cry games where we were actually largely first person based so I actually think this is a good thing and will contribute to a more meaningful immersive story but in short storyline wise the name of the game here is to take down Anton Castillo and overthrow his oppressive dictatorship regime which sounds awesome sign me up so how big is the map in Yara well Far Cry's lead game designer David Grivel said that this is the biggest map we've ever created for a Far Cry game it's a whole country with infrastructure ports towns and a capital city and I don't think this is a surprise to many of us who do play Ubisoft games as at the moment, large open worlds seem to be their focus right now, but if we take what Dave says and compare it to the previous Far Cry 5 game, it actually takes 54 minutes to actually run across the whole of Hope County in Far Cry 5, and with Far Cry 6 being bigger, I think you can probably get a bit of an idea on the scope and size of this new game. So let's take an actual look at the map here, and what we have are four main territories in the game, and apologies in advance for the pronunciation, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I am an absolute pioneer when it comes to other languages. But in terms of territory, we've got Magruda, Esperanza, Val de Oro, and El Este, with the tutorial island of Isla Santuaro, which is actually in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, if you can see, and that's where we're gonna learn the basics and meet some key people before we start the main storyline. David Grivel also went on to say that we're able to freely move around as soon as we actually start the game. So once we leave the tutorial island, there isn't actually anything stopping us heading directly to the capital called Esperanza. But you'll also notice on the map that there's a great rank which is what we will earn for fighting against Castillo by raiding his bases and killing his men and if you look at the skull just next to that region it is noting its difficulty comparatively to our current level in the game so we can actually freely explore the game and its regions but just expect a harder time when you actually come across enemies in regions with a skull next to their name because they're going to hit pretty hard. Now let's talk about some weapons and there is a lot here in Far Cry 6 which is great but when it does actually come to combat we're only going to be able to run with a loadout of three primary weapons and one side on which we can then switch in and out by using that familiar Ubisoft RPG wheel. There's also several ways to actually unlock new weapons here in Yara and we can do that from infiltrating military controlled zones to building up your Greer camp facilities and actually buying them from the vendors there. We can also find weapons by searching in different areas around the map or completing specific operations or actually just from looting chests in treasure hunt events which are actually in the game as well. With that being said there's eight weapon types here in the game and it's the usual firearm kind of categories as you'd expect but the resolver weapons are one of the main talking points here they can actually be purchased from an arms dealer and after you do purchase them with depleted uranium which is a very rare material that can only be obtained from anti-aircraft government sites and once you do manage to get your hands on these you'll be able to purchase these weapons and each one has a special purpose and there's a total of nine of them that you can freely upgrade in the game we also get access to the supremo backpacks which are actually crafted from spare parts that turn into these super weapons which is 
quite similar in that regard to the resolver weapons but these essentially act like an ultimate ability that can be triggered in challenging fight situations and range from unleashing toxic gas to then detonating a deadly round of explosive or actually functioning as a mobile surgeon med kit when you're under pressure so the caveat being that they have a very long cooldown after you do use them so it's definitely designed to be an every now and then ability similar to what you can kind of get in destiny if you've ever played that game but either way pretty cool very much looking forward to using them now moving on to customization and when it does come to customization game designer dave grivel said that the word customize was the key word from the development team when designing far cry 6 and from everything we've seen so far it is very clear that that is most definitely permeated into pretty much every aspect of the game you can actually craft new mods and attachments for your weapons as well as armor slots and even vehicles which we will talk about shortly so it is very important you actually hoover up everything in terms of loot in this game and you do that by picking up spare parts from enemies chests and of course government buildings that you decide to raid once you've picked up all of this scrap you'll be able to then visit the crafting workbenches back at your guerrilla outposts which is where you're going to be able to change and alter your weapons as well as your ammo and armor to your particular liking this all makes sense really because if you want to craft incendiary rounds to then take down specific enemies with flammable tanks to their backs or craft blast rounds to punch through helicopters and vehicles you can definitely do it in this game additionally as far cry 6 is focused heavily on equipment bonuses you will come across certain armor sets that actually offer set bonuses if you equip all five pieces of gear some of them provide you with some seriously strong advantages in combat so it is worth collecting and equipping a specific set rather than actually running around with a patchwork of individual gear pieces and by the way folks if you have learned anything new or felt like you've picked up some value from the video so far then if you wouldn't mind chucking a very swift like down below it would be very kind of you and very helpful so thank you very much now as you play through far cry you'll come across guerrilla camps one camp being in each region and they end up being unlocked after you actually finish the main storyline of that particular region it's here where you're going to find workbenches to upgrade your weapons armor vehicles and play side quests like dominoes as well as upgrade the camps themselves which is going to offer you an assortment of benefits for example you could actually build a hunting lodge and then that then shows you the best hunting spots on the map so you're actually able to hunt down a prized animal for solid resources and then you're going to also be able to improve your gear weapons and get some permanent buffs for hunting specific yaren game across the country now a really cool thing to note in these camps is the lost bandidos operation hub this is where you're going to actually be able to send out revolutionaries around the country on specific missions and when you do open up the menu you'll be able to see the chances of the mission's success with a specific career that you choose as well as the rewards for completing that specific mission also you're going to come across a lot of outposts to clear as you'd kind of expect in any far cry game but it has been confirmed by the developers that they will reset after you clear them so just like in new dawn which is pretty good news so stealth and guerrilla tactics it definitely looks like we're going to be getting a bit of variety here which is fantastic news first up we'll be able to use chorizo our friendly dog companion as a stealth distraction more on that shortly but we'll also be able to use weapons such as the bow throwing knives and a cool machete takedown when sneaking up on enemies for that silent but deadly approach additionally we'll be able to holster our weapon which means that we'll be able to start conflict when we want to and not otherwise be instantly engaged by enemies just like in previous titles a good example of this is that developers have said that we'll be able to drive up to a military vehicle with our gun holstered and then pick the right time for us to then let loose saying that though this doesn't mean that we could just waltz up to the front door of a military installation with our gun holstered and then be invited in for tea and medals but it is good to know that we can go fishing exploring and get immersed with this open world without constantly needing to reload our firearm there's also a lot of story missions outposts and military buildings that are going to be open to infiltration through hidden guerrilla paths in the environment so we'll be able to find and sneak our way into these places with the knowledge of being a revolutionary which i'm a really big fan of here but what I'm also a fan of, and it's the Amigos, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of these awesome pets and creatures that have been included in a lot of Far Cry videos, and this is all part of the new support system called the Amigos. Essentially, how the system works is we'll be able to recruit these animals, and they become available to tag along on collaborative missions, and each one of these Amigos actually has a specific skill that can either help you enhance the type of game style you like to play, or just come along for a bit of a laugh. For example, we pick up Guapo, who's the bloodthirsty crocodile, and he comes with the trait Ancient Survival, which actually allows him to passively regenerate health out of combat and even when he does die he then self revives when he's down so definitely your tanking machine he's an absolute beast and we've also got Chorizo the lovely dog who you can actually pick up by pre-ordering the game and this small champion actually distracts enemies allowing you to go full send on that stealth orientated gameplay on top of those two we have Chichicharon and I'm sure I've pronounced it terribly but he's a rooster whose abilities actually remain a mystery at the moment or as far as I'm aware but he does look like a very high damage sight disabling amigo 
He also looks pretty badass, I've got to say. But if you do decide to pull the trigger on the Ultimate Edition, you'll be able to pick up Champagne, who's a Panther. And I reckon that it's going to be some sort of stealth damage hybrid here. And interestingly, Ubisoft have just come out and said that we'll be able to find Boom Boom from Far Cry 5 in-game somewhere located in Yara. So I cannot wait to find him. I also do think that we will pick up more Amigos as we go on, especially as we transition into the DLCs, as I think they add a little bit of flair to the game. And I'm sure if used correctly, they will be very helpful in certain situations but also they're just good fun to have by your side while playing the game now moving on to vehicles and we've got a myriad of different ones here in the game but this is actually a first for far cry we're going to be able to ride a horse throughout yara as we weave in and out of the gorilla trails deep in the countryside and this is great and something that i am an incredibly big fan of and you'll also come across horses in the wild that you can actually mount or alternatively if you come across a horse post in game you'll be able to call one that you can hop on pretty much almost instantly which is a nice feature now in terms of vehicles we'll be able to customize them back at our guerrilla camps allowing a huge amount of cosmetic options just like a mirror dashboard edition here but also turn the car into a south american james bond vehicle with defense and defense options so if you feel like hopping into your turret and firing at a military blockade while you charge into it with a battering ram placed on the front of your whip say no more this game is for you also a few honorable mentions here you'll be able to zip line around the country jump onto jet skis commandeer a tank fly a helicopter and even use your wingsuit to try and capture pelicans in the game so there's a lot of traversal and transportation options open to us here which sounds great now co-op is also back on the menu in far cry as david gribble went on to say that when it comes to co-op your progression is saved and even if you load into your mate's game you don't need to worry about it at all additionally if one of you has far cry on ps4 and the other one is on ps5 you can still play together on co-op conversely the same goes for xbox one and xbox series x and s and when you actually do revert to your world after the co-op session's finished you take with you everything you've earned and collected including your progression which is a huge tick in my eyes but when it does come to future content ubisoft are laying their cards firmly on the table here and it's clear they want us to stay engaged with the game after launch and they've already announced three dlcs as well as a range of different free content coming to the game which will be updated weekly by the way as we're getting new game modes called weekly insurgency where we actually fight off the regime and all of this content runs up to march next year which is a lot to be honest with you in a very short space of time so let's hope it's great big fingers crossed for this one now what is also great is our awesome discord community of over 500 people so if you enjoy talking about all types of games and fancy a chinwag come and join the invite link is down below and it would be great to see you in the lobby anyway i hope this video was interesting and you picked up some value from it i'm very much looking forward to catching you in the next one and as usual coffee's on me